Hi, this is a special video for Paul Mitchell, who donated the channel. Thank you very much, uh, my dear Paul. And as I promised here, I made you a video in which I'm going uh, to give you some advice on how to replace uh, the potentiometer and uh, concerning that cold start uh, I think we can make it uh, better. Now I'm going uh, to give you some advice on uh, duty cycle how you do that because it uh, wouldn't uh, be, be bad for you to do it uh, now if you have everything operational uh, what uh, you have uh, to do in order to do your duty cycle which I'm going to explain you how to do a bit later so let's see how we replace and uh, calibrate uh, the potentiometer okay paul as you decide to calibrate uh, your potentiometer and to replace it this is the picture you're going to see as you see this is what I'm holding in my hand fuel pressure regulator and you will have to remove this line the intake line the bracket holding the fuel pressure regulator because it will be impossible it will be impossible for you to to remove uh, the potentiometer with uh, the fuel pressure regulator in its side so that and you will have to unplug this line the differential pressure line as you do here is that tube going to the crankshaft breather hose you can just move aside the fuel pressure regulator this gives you access to your potentiometer the first thing you do, you take a scribe or something sharp and you mark the position here of your potentiometer, here and here, for, for you to be easier. And now you start undoing these this one these are not uh, the originals so the originals should be t15 or t10 something like that here now i'm going to do that but you know the first thing you will have these protectors you will have to lose them to take them out and that's going to be a pain believe me so here i'll try my to do my best to show you in real time here and now move it towards you like this because 
the the worst thing that can happen are these two these contacts you see them because if you damage them if you break them then you will have to find this whole new thing the air flow potentiometer the new one you will have to to buy because uh, i don't know as for me i don't know if uh, there is a new one to, to buy and uh, that's why i want you to be careful and be really careful once you you're done no you take your new potentiometer let it be this one for, for example Uh, pretty straightforward. You know how they say. Uh, reassembly is uh, the reverse of uh, the removal and now look now don't tighten uh, the screws too much something like this and do it in a crisscross pattern Here, this much. And now, what I would advise you to move the potentiometer a bit from where you uh, marked the position. A bit up. So that way you increase the signal. Because uh, as uh, you have to make corrections, it uh, will be easier for you to move this one down than to, to uh, uh, push it up. Here. You do this operation with Torx this screwdriver fits here look this much not don't don't go uh, crazy and the last one here this much now you will have to hook the connection here up and uh, if you cannot uh, take off here the connector it should be opened like this or uh, i can't remember but then you can buy Hirschman clamps. I'm going to show you on the video. And now what you have to do, you will have to get your, your fuel pressure regulator back. It's something, it rests something like this. Never mind, something like this. As you do that, then you start your car. And this is important. You should uh, let it uh, warm up by all by itself. Don't, don't rev it up. 
and turn off everything the ac the the stereo everything 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 uh, all the consumers and now you take some kind of a multimeter i simply have this option for uh, for volts and you can set uh, for example on uh, two volts or the lowest uh, the the lowest range as lower as possible because uh, the reading is going to be more precise and you take now these and you hook up the negative on the first contact and the positive on the second contact you can take those Hirschman clamps for example here like this they should be like this or in those clamps and as the car is warm then you you look at your readings what what it says you have to get 0.7 volts they say plus uh, minus uh, 0.1 but look uh, and uh, make it sure to be 0.7 volts well if it is as i as i've uh, told you for them to be higher then you can do like it like this you can just uh, tap it like this to lower the uh, the signal because as i told you the fuel pressure regulator is going to come here and now it will be uh, more difficult uh, for you to raise up the the value if uh, to and you will have to raise up uh, the potentiometer then to lower it and as you're done you got those uh, 0.7 volts and then you you tighten up fully <laughs> and that's the funniest part the best should I say because then the voltage is going to change and again you will have to make this fine adjustments to uh, to calibrate uh, this one to be 0.7 volts and that's about it and now what i would like to tell you further Further, I would like to tell you that to uh, try to do the duty cycle. I was not talking about the duty cycle so much. I wasn't talking about it at all. In order to do uh, your duty cycle, your potentiometer must be must be good. Your the lambda probe must be good and your TPS must uh, uh, must uh, uh, be good it uh, uh, must recognize uh, the closed uh, throttle as well as uh, the cutoff uh, decel switch that uh, micro switch it uh, 
must uh, inform the ECU that uh, the that uh, the the engine is on uh, idle. That's it. The next thing you will have to do is to have a duty ca a cycle capable multimeter like this one and you will have to select here the percents here like this do you see here it says here percents up let me show you there if you see here it says percents and now you will have to stick your leads the negative you know on, on that uh, round uh, diagnostics uh, the negative goes in number two the positive in number three if don't if you have a car without it it has to show a steady number of 50. the higher the, num the number the leaner is your mixture the lower the number the richer is your mixture and now that's not the only thing you will have to do with uh, one uh, multimeter i wanted to say they usually do it uh, like that it's highly recommendable that you have another multimeter for your your eha and the second multimeter you will have to hook here on its connectors and you're going to read amps so the current you have to read the current on your eha has to fluctuate between uh, minus three and uh, zero amps it is recommendable to be minus two that would be ideal so your current must be negative minus two as you raise your car at uh, 2000 rpm that current has to be between three and five amps plus of course now that's how it is uh, for m102 engines and everything you do how you do that well with this with this little thing three mils uh, allen you you put it inside and here you move it here like this here here now now the key caught you will have to make tiny almost uh, let's say microscopic uh, movements you will have to to do that and what i forgot to, to mention your air filter housing must be on don't take it off when doing this when doing your duty cycle your uh, air filter housing must be on that's very very important thing as you make a mo movement 
for for example like this you move a bit then wait a bit some 10 seconds on idle and it's also recommendable as uh, you do your uh, movements uh, with uh, the allen then after some 10 seconds uh, rev up the car a bit Boom. if you have any additional questions just <laughs> you know where to find me that's everything from me if you like this video then i would be glad and bye bye much love from serbia happy mercedesing